Hello, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva. Today we are doing part two of our spooky spider web pendant. And here we go. Here's the finished pendant. And remember, we learned how to make the spider in part one of the video. This is part two, and we're going to learn how to make the web. And then we're going to learn how to attach the spider to the web. So let's see what we need to do to make this, but uh, commercial time. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Yay! <laughs> let's see what we need to make the web. For supplies, you are going to need some 16 gauge wire. I'm using copper for my wires. Um, this I used about 8 inches of it. And you can use 18 gauge wire if you don't have 16 gauge wire, but since we use it for the frame of the web, um, 18 gauge can get a little floppy, so you might have to work hard in it a little bit to get it to work. 16 gauge is your best bet. You will need a some 26 gauge wire, and this is for the web. You'll need your little spider. You will need, let's see, a round nose plier, flat nose or chain nose pliers, a small wire cutter, um, if you don't have a wire cutter that cuts 16 gauge well, guess what? Just get out your uh, memory wire shears. And then you'll need something to go ahead and string your necklace on, and I'm just using some black silk ribbon. Okay, I've got my 8 inch piece of 16 gauge wire, and what I'm doing is I'm putting it around my... Um, <laughs> My form of choice, which in this case is my bottle of Renaissance Wax. And I'm going to, to put it around. I want to make sure that I've got it pretty, pretty good and pretty tight. And that looks pretty good. If I was really concerned about it, I could just go ahead and do it a little bit more. So, But it's going to spring back some. But uh, what you really want is a circle of about two inches. Now I need to go ahead and take care of the area that's going to be the clasp, or excuse me, the uh, bail. So what I'm doing is I'm taking one of the wires and I'm just moving it up. So I've just gone ahead and created a little kink in it. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other wire. So I'm grabbing it. Let's see if I can show it to you better this way. I'm grabbing it and I am pulling it up. Now you notice that it looks a little on the wonky side and what I need to do is get it a little bit better straightened out because I want these um, these to be parallel. So what you can do is just go ahead and hold it and you know kind of manipulate the wire a little bit. I know 16 gauge is a little bit more difficult than like 18 gauge, but just take your time and go ahead and do it. So you can see that it's mostly straight at this point. And this is what you want. You just want them to be parallel at first. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure off about an inch. So I've got that. So an inch is about right here. And here's a tip. If you don't have flush cutters that will handle 16 gauge wire, just get out your memory wire shears. And it's great because it also flush cuts both sides. That is cool. Once I realized I could do this, you know, it's wonderful. Don't have to keep flush cutting each end. So anyway, make them about about even. Of course, I've got mine a little cockeyed. So that's what it looks like so far. So now I've got my roughly three feet of the 26 gauge wire. And I'm going to start by using a short piece of wire, and I'm going to loop it around one of the um, one of the the pieces of wire in the pendant. I'll say that right. So I've got this, and I'm just going to loop around just one of the wires. So I'll loop around, oh, maybe three times. Oh. 
little bit better. Take my long piece of wire, so this is my three foot side, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around the bale. So I'm going to wrap it around both pieces of the bale, both wires. So three, four, and five. So I've got it looking like this. All right, my wire, my working length of wire is coming around the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like little loops around the outside of this circle. So I'm going to take the wire and I'm just going to make a little loop right here. So you can see I've got my piece of wire and I'm going to take my working end, I'm going to move it around and I'm going to make three loops. So there's one, two, and three. Well, one, I should have said coils. I'm making three coils. <clears throat> so there we go, three coils. And you could make these as pretty as you want them. Now I've got my working piece of wire here. I'm going to repeat it. So I'm just, I'm not making these exact. Um, you can if you want to, you can measure it and do everything. This is Halloween jewelry. <laughs> I'm not going to take that kind of uh, attention to detail with something like this. So we've got one, two, three wraps around. So that's what it looks like now. I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around until I get up to this end. Okay, I'm back up to the top. So now you can see I've gone all the way around. So my next move is actually going to be going inside this particular one. So now we're going to, to start um, decreasing, I guess you could say. So the trick here is now you have to go into the space between these two. So I'm going into the space and you're going to have to be a lot more careful when you're pulling this tight. The reason being is now you're working on a piece of 26 gauge wire that you're pulling it around. So you don't want to break the wire. So here I've got it looking like this. I probably want it a little bit smoother. So I've got it like that. I'm holding on to this original piece of 26 gauge wire. And I'm kind of just gently with my fingers, I'm trying to wrap it around. And this will be a little tricky at first. And you might want to practice this with a shorter length of wire first. Just, you know, cut off another piece somewhere and, and do it. Um, just because, again, you don't want to go ahead and break the 26 gauge wire. So now you can see... This is what it looks like. And I'm only going around twice on these. So it's going to be the same thing for the next one. I'm just going in between these two wires. And I probably should have gotten a smaller length of wire to use for demo purposes, but hey. So I'm kind of smushing it together a little bit, being very careful not to break the wire, trying not to get myself in the eyes with this. So if I didn't mention it before earlier, I can't remember if I did or not, it's always a good idea to wear some sort of eye protection when doing this, when working with long um, lengths of wire. I mean, I always have to wear reading glasses anyway when I look at wire. What can I say? My eyes are old. But, um, you know, better safe than sorry. So as you see, I've got the next one. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to put my wire up through here and there, etc. And I'm going to go around until I've just about closed them all up and then I'll show you how to go ahead and close them. Okay, up. So we see that I'm down here now. So what do I, I want to do is I want to close up this circle a bit. So make it a little bit more stable in the center. 
So what I'm doing is you can see that my wire is right here at this point. So I'm just going to actually just kind of sew through the rest of the wires around here. So I'm going down through this one. Oops, sorry about that. I'm going down through this one, up through the next one, down through the next one. So it's really just sewing it along. And what's going to happen is you're going to end up making like a circle in the center. And that circle in the center is just going to make it a little bit more stable. Now we want to decide where we want our little spider. Right now I'm coming out close to being in the middle. And if I look at my spider, well, I'll worry about the legs in a second, but if I want him to be right about here, I know that I have to attach him to a wire like this. So what I'm going to do is go up to this wire, put my wire through the 26 gauge, and then bring it back around. So I'm just making another loop. And this is the loop that I'm going to use to attach the head pin to the web. So I've got my little loop where I want it. Now I will take my little spider friend and run my wire through the head pin or the loop of the head pin. And I can get my little legs sorted out in just a second. But, well, this leg is not cooperating. There we go. So now I've got the head pin. You can see the wires going through it. And I'm just going to loop it back through. So you're basically just wiring your spider to his web. Now I can do one of a couple things with my little spider feet. I can take each one of these loops, I can open them just like I'd open a jump ring, and I can attach them to an existing wire. In some cases, the legs have been long enough so that I can kind of weave them under and then over, and they're pretty stable like this. And then there are some wires that just kind of flop all over the place. So we need to take care of them or else our spider is going to be looking like he's doing a dance all the time. First, let me show you this, opening up the uh, loops. And you have to be a little bit on the careful side for this. And I'm just opening a loop to the side. So let's see. Opening the loop to the side. And I'm going to put it through the 26 gauge wire, being very careful not to lose any of my seed beads. So there I go. And then I'm just going to close that. So I am looped on to this piece of wire. My little spider isn't going to go anywhere. Okay, what I've done is a lot of the feet I have gone ahead and hooked to some of the 26 gauge wire. I have left this foot undone and I've left this foot undone because we're just going to wire wrap them to um, wires nearby. What I have is I still have my area where I was coming out of the head pin. So I'm going to go down behind my work. I'm going to loop through various wires. So I'm just kind of going to go in and out. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get to a part where I'm going to be near this foot. So actually, um, I'm in a pretty good spot. <laughs> so I'm just going to find a way to anchor this because I want to anchor it around another wire before I wrap it to my foot. Now here's something that you need to watch out for. So it's a good thing that I did it. See this little loop? 
If you try to pull it tight, you're going to create a kink in your wire. So whenever you see a loop like this, what you're just going to do is push your wires together until you get the loop undone. And then just straighten out the wire some. You never want to pull one of those little loops tight because you run the risk of breaking your wire. All right, so I've got it looped around. Now I'm going to go through his little footy and bind him to the web. All right, so we've got this foot taken care of. Now what about this guy? A couple things. I could go ahead and end and start a new piece of wire, which I think I'm actually going to do for this one because otherwise I'm going to have a little bit of a trouble trying to go from one wire up to here without it being kind of obvious. So for this particular guy, since I'm going to cut the wire here, I'm just going to make one more loop. So let's just make sure that it's a little on the straight side or secure side. So I've got three loops. I'm going to take my wire clippers and be very careful about doing this. Don't cut your web. <laughs> Don't ask me how many times I've cut my web. Yeah. So I've got my last piece of wire and I'm just going to wrap it around oh, a couple times. So I'm basically just creating one of those three wraps. So just like I would, excuse me, just like I would have done up here. And since it's on the outer piece of wire, I do like to be, I'm sorry, I keep going out of focus. I do like to be kind of neat when I'm going around the outside piece of wire. So there I've got three loops. Kind of mush them together. And then I'm going to take my long end, put it through his little spider foot, pull, so kind of get them together. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap him closed. You may have been wondering, by the way, why I haven't cut this piece of wire off. And the reason being is sometimes I find myself wanting to wrap something like one more time. And this little piece of wire comes in handy. So I never cut it off until the very, very end. All right, so I've got these two. Um, I see one of these is still a little bit shorter than the other. So I will come in and snip off just a tiny bit at the tip. There we go. Now I've got to go ahead and put these two, wrap them to the back. So what I do is I put one of them forward a little bit so I don't get it in the way. So they kind of look like this. And I'm going to take this one, I'm going towards the thick end of my pliers. Now you can use um, step nose pliers, you can use bail making pliers, whatever suits your fancy, whatever suits your need and whatever size you want. So this is what I've got so far. You can see I still have a little bit of a, of a uh, hole there. So I'm just going to get it closed as much as possible. Okay, time to finish up on the bale. Now I'm going to pretty much keep it the way it is, but I'm gonna do some wrapping right in this area, just because I don't like the look of that naked bit. And I think it'll kind of look like uh, some sort of wrapped bandage by having a wrap here, then these, then another one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm turning it over and you can see that I have my wire going down the back. So I'm going to take it through to the front. So pull it around back and let's see if I can get this up real close. So you can see that it's just wrapped down. And now I'm just going to take it and wrap around, oh, I don't know, three or four times. Now again, if I was making some fine jewelry or something other than a one-night piece of jewelry, 
um, I would be taking a lot more time and effort with this. But this is for Halloween. This doesn't have to be a work of art or anything like that. It just has to be fun. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I've got this. I'm going to wrap it a bit more towards the back. So I'm going to cut it off back here. At this point, all we have left to do is to go ahead and put it on a necklace. I personally like things like black silk for something like this. I think it's uh, a great choice. Um, what I would have loved to have, but I don't have on hand, is some black sari silk. You know how it's all fringed and everything like that. So I thought, think that would look kind of cool, but... I like the looks of this. So here is the spider pendant all finished. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do so. And I hope you have a fabulous Halloween. Catch you later. Bye.